two for. We've just finished up like adding integers, subtracting integers, so adding subtracting numbers without decimals, positives, negatives, that kind of thing. Now we're going to do the same thing but with multiplication and division. So 2, 4 is multiplication of integers. And I'm going to just start with Roman numeral 1. Before we deal with numbers at all, I'm just going to look at the signs, the positives and negatives and stuff like that. So signs... When multiplying and dividing. So it doesn't matter if you're multiplying or if you're dividing. You're going to get the same thing happening with the signs. If you have two numbers, and you could either, yeah, it's probably worth writing. So if you have two numbers, so with two numbers, maybe I'll just start by writing that way, colon. We'll talk about that. If you have two numbers that number one have the same sign, let's take a peek at what happens. So if we do that, so say I have like four times three. They're both positive. The answer is going to be 12. So if I start out with two positives, I get a positive. Agreed? If I start out with two negatives, so they both have a negative, they both have the same sign, negative four times negative three is... 12. So if you punch that into your calculator, you're going to get a 12. If you have two negatives, they cancel each other out when you're multiplying or dividing. So same thing if you had like a fraction with negative 4 over negative 3, you'd end up with a positive answer. So for that, you could say if you have the same sign, it's going to equal a positive. So it doesn't matter if you start out with two positives or if you start out with two negatives. If you're multiplying two numbers and they have the same sign, it's going to be positive. The second thing then would be if you have different signs, so we're saying one is positive and one is negative, what's going to happen there? And if you're not sure, or if you draw a blank on a test or quiz, even go and punch in an example, uh, four times negative three gives you negative 12. Sounds like we're rusty on this, right? Or if I did it in the other order, if I had a negative 4 times a positive 3, I'm still going to get a negative 12. So you guys not real practice that multiplying with negatives in your head? Okay, 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 that makes more sense. I was wondering why people were so hesitant to say something. Uh, but if you have different signs, you're always going to end up with what kind of number? Negative. Equals a negative. The next part then is what if you have more than two numbers? And I'm going to kind of write my stuff intentionally in two columns, and you should see a pattern emerging. Let's say we have, if you're multiplying or dividing, maybe I should put in a little heading and say more than two numbers. So more than two numbers. And that heading of more than doesn't work, so I'm going to start out with just one negative. But if you're multiplying and let's say you only have one negative when you're multiplying, so this isn't more than two numbers yet. But if you have one negative, just like our example right here, um, what do you end up with then? Your answer will be negative. negative. I'm going to go to the right of that and say if I have two negatives, if we go up above, we had two negatives right here with this one, and we ended up with a positive answer, right? Mm -hmm. So you could say, all right, with two negatives, you're going to get a positive answer. Agreed? And it's like those two negatives kind of cancel each other out. A negative times a negative will give you a positive. Well, if I have three negatives, the answer should be... Actually, it's a combination of the two. If I have three negatives, do you agree when I do the first negative times the second negative, those negatives are going to cancel and give me a positive? Then I have that positive number times my third negative, which is going to make it negative again. So three negatives makes it negative. Because that pair of two negatives cancel, so you end up with really just a positive times a negative. If I go over here to four negatives, I'm going to get a positive. Because four negatives, I don't know if I'd mess up my notes with this, but say you have like negative one times negative two times negative three times negative four. I wouldn't mess up my notes probably, but negative one times negative two, that's going to end up being a positive number, right? Negatives cancel. Give me two. Negative 3 times negative 4 gives me a positive 12. And 2 times 12 just is 
positive 24. Um, the other way to look at it, you could just work left to right, that you end up with first the 2, and then you do 2 times the negative 3, gets you a negative 6, and negative 6 times negative 4 gets you back to positive again. So you could kind of view it either way. But you see how every time you have a pair of 2, though, it cancels. So we could keep going. If you have 5 negatives, it would be... Six negatives, uh, seven, okay, you get the point. All right, so then, you know, we try to find a bright color for dramatic emphasis, and we'll say, all right, so if you have an odd number of negatives, when you're multiplying or dividing, you're going to get a negative answer. And it's probably better to not just memorize this, but as much as realize, kind of like, okay, when you have two negatives, they cancel. And you'll kind of reason through it like we were doing for 5 and 6 and 7. If you have an even number of negatives, then you're going to get a positive answer. Because you can break it up in like pairs of 2 to get that even number of negatives, and each pair cancels out and becomes positive. Roman numeral 2. Roman numeral 2 is mental math. So I'm going to say mental math. I'm just going to start with an example and say, all right, if I had negative 4 times negative 3 times negative 25, I could say negative 4 times negative 3, and you now know the answer is going to be positive or negative? Positive. Positive, positive 12. Agreed? Then I do that times negative 25, and I think, why did I give myself a problem like this in front of class? Ah, the answer is going to be negative 300. There's an easier way to do a problem like this, though, and that if you have all multiplication, you can change around the order of the numbers and not have it change the value of your answer at all. So that's totally legal when it's all multiplication. It's called the commutative property of multiplication. And in order to do that, I'm going to say if we switch these two, I think you'll find it's a whole lot easier to do that in your head. So we'd have negative 4 times negative 25 times a negative 3. So that whole first line now, that all that's legal to do, that those are equal with each other, everything in that first line. And why this is nicer to do would be now if we do this here. A lot of times people think of quarters. Four quarters is a dollar, is a hundred. So you'd have a hundred. And a negative times a negative is positive. So then that becomes a hundred times a negative three. Gives us negative 300 with a whole lot less mental energy needed. I'm not going to take the time to write out the whole commutative property of multiplication. But I am going to write this. I'm going to kind of summarize it and say when multiplying numbers, so when multiplying numbers, you can change the order of the numbers. So be looking for ways that as you're doing multiplication problems with several numbers that you could combine the numbers in a different order to make it easier. If you wanted to, you could add that that's the commutative property of multiplication. I'll put that in. Commutative property of multiplication. And then we have that same thing for addition. You can add numbers in either order. So addition multiplication has these properties. Subtraction and division does not. Going to my next one, I'll say Roman numeral 3. Let's just go the rest of the way. So Roman numeral 3 is the inverse property of multiplication. So inverse property of multiplication. And the key thing, inverses are going to kind of keep coming up. Inverses are going to be two things that undo each other. So I'll write inverses, um, inverses undo each other. I have absolutely no money in my wallet right now, which is too bad, because this would be a cool demonstration. But if I were to, like, say Lily has a certain amount of money, if I were to give her a 20, she just got $20 richer, right? Mm -hmm. What would be the inverse of giving her $20? 
just you, how you just take it back. Like, what? <laughs> Not happening. Um, I'm cheap. But, um, you know, that she started out with a certain amount of money. It changed to something new. If you want to undo it, you take it back. So adding, subtracting are going to be inverses of each other. Um, so we're looking at what are operations then that could undo something. So if I were to say, for my example, I'll do example. What's the inverse of times 2? Do I want to actually write that out? Ah, oh, why not? What's the inverse of multiplying by 2? So if I were to double the amount of money in your wallet, if I wanted to get you back to where you started, I would do two options. Go for it. Perfect. You could divide by 2. And the other way to look at it is dividing by 2 is the same as multiplying by 1 over 2. If you double the amount of money, you could either divide by 2 to get back, or you could multiply by 1 half. So the answer then for that one is going to be a divide by 2. Or if you wanted to find other inverses, um, you could say other examples. So examples... We'll just try to scribble a bunch down without a whole bunch of writing. So if you had 5 times 2 equals 10, if you wanted to get back, you could say, well, 10 times 1 half, or 10 divided by 2, would get you back to 5. Does that make sense? If you were to say, all right, if I had 5 times 4, let's pick something different. If I were to do an 8 times 4, gets me to 32. If I want to go backwards, if I want to start at 32 and change it back into an 8, I would have to divide by 4 or multiply by not half, 1 fourth. Because multiplying by 1 half is the same as dividing by 2. Multiplying by 1 fourth is the same as dividing by 4. Should I quick show why? Because I think I'm losing a few of you. Okay, here, here's the... I probably wouldn't write this. You'll look at it later and be like, what's going on? But when you have this 32 times 1 fourth, can I convince you that 32 is the same as 32 over 1? Mm -hmm. yep. And when you're multiplying two fractions, really all you do is you make it into one ginormous fraction, and then you multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators. Fair enough? Ideally, I'd be like reducing first, so divide both by 4 and, and so on, but I don't want to do that, and I can't erase it now that I did. But okay, if we pretend the blue slashes aren't there, 32 times 1 gives me 32, 1 times 4 gives me 4. Do you agree then that if I take and change this back, 32 times 1 fourth is really just the same as 32 divided by 4? That's kind of the, the gist of how ones like those work. All right. Then here's, here's the line. This is the, what in the world is the teacher trying to say? This is the takeaway from this. So, um, A over B, such as like 4 over 1, multiplying by 4, A over B, they call it the multiplicative inverse, is the multiplicative inverse. of B over A. So A over B is the multiplicative inverse of B over A. We are close to the end. So, and I'm going to say the inverse property of multiplication. So the inverse property of multiplication. So inverse property of multiplication, what that's trying to say is if you have A over B times B over A, that's going to equal, you could, and this is what I probably should do, is put in numbers. So I need some numbers. A and B are going to be 12 and 5. 12 and 5. Um, so if I have 12 over 5, my next fraction would have to be 5 over 12. I should have picked the numbers. You can't reduce those. Okay, so if you can't reduce those, 12 times 5 is going to be 
Nice, 60. And 5 times 12 is 60. 60 over 60 is 1. Should that work for this A and B mess up above? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It does. And Because you could say, well, I have AB over AB, you know, and then you could cancel them out there. Or you could just say, hey, look, there's, I wouldn't mess up your notes with this, but there's an A in the numerator, A in the denominator. Divide both by A, you get 1. Divide the numerators and denominators by B, you get 1. So it's really just 1 times 1 over 1 times 1. But keep the blue stuff. It's more clear. We're done.